Let's rank and review all three of Jordan Peele's horror movies. What's your favorite scary movie? Hey everybody, what's up? Killjoy Jake here, and instead of having friends, I have horror movies. So I was going to do a big old nope spoiler video today, but then I'm like, you know, why not do something even crazier than that? Let's do a review of all three of Jordan Peele's movies at the same time and rank all of them. Screw it! So now before we get into this big old nasty thing, I'm gonna need y'all to like this video and subscribe for more horror content coming your way in the future. And also, if you want to see a big old nasty spoiler review of just the movie Nope that has come out today, you can check out my live stream tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss it or old Jakey's gonna get angry here. And you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. One more thing I want to say before we really get into this is that, honestly, I love all three of these movies. I think they are all just absolutely wonderful, and Jordan Peele really is one of the best horror directors of our time. I'm in love with how bizarre his filmography is, and I truly love every single entry. I think you could rearrange all three of these movies in any order, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, you could do these in any order, really. Here is my take, though, after some really careful analysis. Coming in third place is Nope. I absolutely loved this movie, but I do feel like the movies that came before this were a little better. In my non-spoiler review, which you can check out up here if you don't want to get spoiled, I do talk about how bizarre and crazy and big and fun this movie is, but it is very, very messy, unlike his first two movies. That's kind of the biggest problem I have with it. Like, overall, great idea. The whole idea of a spaceship actually being the alien and eating people is fucking sick. Oh my god, no complaints there for me. The concept of this movie is easily his most abstract and crazy that he's done so far, but it does come with a lot of problems. I mean, you have have some really messy storytelling here, especially in the third act, where I genuinely, there's a point in this movie where I don't even know what's going on. They go over what their plan is to like take down the spaceship so quickly. They really never get, they never really fully explain it. I mean, it just feels like so like under, the, the ending of this movie feels a little underdeveloped, but it's also understandable considering how big and crazy this project is. I mean, how else would you have written this movie to make it all make sense? Unlike Jordan Peele's first two installments, this movie is pretty devoid of any and all social commentary. There's like some stuff at the very beginning, but that's it, and it really doesn't affect the rest of the movie, and it really doesn't keep a consistent theme. The first half of this movie feels like it's trying to do something Jordan Peele-y, but then it kind of just turns into like an action horror movie in the third act. Which I don't mind at all if you wanted to just make an action horror movie cool, but I think what was so significant about those first two movies is the cultural impact. Like, there are messages in both Get Out and Us that are so prevalent today and so powerful, I feel like Jordan Peele's really the only person to do social commentary right recently. And that's kind of why I guess I'm a little disappointed pointed that he didn't like decide to tackle a new issue in this movie but at the same time I still loved this film and it's fucking awesome and very enjoyable. I'm not really of the opinion that every movie needs to do social commentary but I think out of all the directors nowadays who are are kind of commenting on stuff in the real world Jordan Peele is easily my favorite. I have one more thing about this movie and then we're really going to get into the positives because trust me the positives outweigh the negatives here. There's a few characters that just don't do anything in this movie, and I don't understand why they're played by prominent actors. You have Barbie Ferreira, who's like from Euphoria, is really popping right now, and she has like less than 30 seconds of screen time in this movie. I, I don't understand the addition of her character. I think she's a great actress. I would love to have seen her actually play a bigger part in this movie, and she just kind of is on screen eating Cheetos for like 30 seconds. I don't, I don't understand the point of her character. And Jupe, too. Like, Steven Yoon's character does not really do anything in this movie, and they spend a lot of time developing him. I mean, I guess it's important for him to have a theme park with a wishing well, like, photo booth thing, because that's how they get the picture of it at the end but that's it, and they spend so much time developing him, especially with his backstory. Like, the whole thing with the monkey, that is awesome. That is the one of the most terrifying things I have ever seen in, in any of Jordan Peele's movies, by far, but it doesn't affect the overall plot at all. Like, it's a cool little side thing, which is sick, and I loved that, but it, like I said, it do, just does nothing for the plot at all. The only thing that I guess I would have changed about this movie, just because, like, this is something off the top of my head, I would have made the whole monkey thing the opening scene of the movie, first of all, instead of just putting, like, 30 seconds of it at the beginning and then like the rest of the scene right in, randomly in the middle of the movie. I didn't really understand why they did that. But the other thing was I would have had Steven Yoon's character play some bigger part in taking down the spaceship. Like you could have had him be the only person to survive after everyone like got eaten and sucked up by the by the ship. 
ship. And then maybe when that balloon goes like midair in the third act and like Jean Jacket kind of takes over it, you could see Steven Yoon's hiding somewhere inside the spaceship, not dead yet or something. And maybe he pops it, blows it up, and then like kills the kills the monster. I, d I don't know. I mean, listen, I'm just spitballing here. His character was awesome. I love Steven Yoon as an actor. I just feel like he didn't really do anything in this movie, which was really a kind of a shame. But regardless, Nope easily has some of the scariest things across the board in any Jordan Peele movie by far. The scene where everyone actually gets sucked up into the spaceship and you see them all like getting crushed and eaten in this giant monster is effing terrifying. I was like shaking in my seat. This was one of the most terrifying things I'd ever seen in my life. It really reminded me of that scene in War of the Worlds where you see all the people in the cage and they're all getting sucked up into that tube thing. I fucking loved it. And the monkey thing was really unexpected and also very real too. Like to, <laughs> that actually happens to people unfortunately, which is fucked up. And to see that on screen, it was such a shock. I wasn't expecting it at all. So that was also really terrifying. Two of like the scariest things I've ever seen from Jordan Peele, which I thought was really impressive. Also, the characters were all great. Just because some of them didn't really play a purpose towards the plot doesn't mean I didn't like them. Like Barbie Ferreira, like I said, she didn't really have too much screen time, but she did have some funny lines, which was great. And I feel like she could have played a bigger role in this movie, but just didn't, which is unfortunate. I absolutely love Brandon Perea and Kiki Palmer, who were massive standouts for me. They were so funny and so hilarious through throughout. They were so enjoyable to watch. Although this movie does take a long time to really get going, it's always fun. Like you're never bored watching this movie. There's always like a great character moment happening or there's just something funny happening on screen. It's always a good time. You are ha you're going to have a blast with this movie no matter what. Coming in second place is Us. Us is, in my opinion, an underrated horror masterpiece. And now, wait, 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 Jay, come on. You're saying that a movie that made 250 plus million dollars at the box office by a guy who won an Oscar is underrated? Yes, I am. Don't you think you're using that word a little too liberally there, punk? No, I don't. I think a lot of people dog on us for having plot holes, but I just don't see what you're talking about. Sure, the characters get lucky and make some weird decisions, but when you're under an incredible amount of pressure, like the situation presented here, you're not exactly going to do everything perfectly. Jordan Peele delivers what I think is an airtight script here for an even bigger story opposed to Get Out, which in a lot of ways can be seen as a more impressive feat. In his sophomore release, Peel gives us another masterful commentary by switching up the focus slightly away from racism and more towards classism. Us is an allegory for the class system in America and how it became predatory. Americans value having things like boats, vacation homes, and expensive liquors over the welfare of their fellow citizens. This is perfectly depicted by the overall concept of the tethered and in the character of Gabe, played by Winston Duke. Gabe is super proud of his vacation home and sort of shitty boats, but when he meets up with his friend Josh, played by Tim Heidecker, later on we immediately see him belittle Gabe for not having something nicer. It seems like that is the extent of their relationship considering that later on in the film when Gabe finds Josh dead, he barely even gives a shit. It kind of just seems like Gabe wanted to prove that he could also have cool stuff too. And if this is maybe sounding a little ridiculous to you, it is, and it's totally real, which totally sucks. Totally. Our world is like literally ending and people care more about the thickness of their grass. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. This allegory I feel like is done so perfectly and so subtly to the point where you might not even notice it if you watch the film, which I think is what's so great about this. Jordan Peele describes the movie as a thoughtful popcorn flick, which is a perfect way to do social commentary in my opinion. You can also see the commentary represented in the relationships between the characters of Adelaide and Red, who I think are just both poor, perfectly portrayed by Lupita Nyong'o. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. She's an absolute show stealer in this movie, just a fantastic lead and really makes for one of my favorite horror movies of 2019. Honestly though, every main character does deserve some major props in my opinion for also playing their evil counterparts throughout this entire film. It's really a 10 out of 10 for me. I, I loved this film a whole lot. It's so iconic. It's so gorgeously shot. I don't know. I, I have no problems with it personally. Now I'm sure you were all expecting this. Number one is going to be Get Out. I mean, listen, I love all of his films. And like I said at the beginning of this video, you can rearrange these any way you want. And I feel like that's a totally valid opinion. These are all fantastic movies, but Get Out to me is just like easily the most important and the most enjoyable. There's so much to love about this film. If it's the tight cinematography, the unique score, or maybe even the very well-written characters. Chris Washington is my favorite by far, played by Daniel Kaluuya. His mumble delivery is really powerful. He does a lot with so little as an actor, and I've always really appreciated that and found that pretty impressive. He really only gets loud like one time in the entire film when he's screaming for his keys, and it's wrenching. Rose, played by Allison Williams, is fucking terrible. 
terrifying. <laughs> Allison takes the character from loving girlfriend to total sociopath by simply eating a bowl of cereal with her hands and then drinking the milk separate? And I thought putting the milk in first was bad. This chick is a fucking psychopath, man. <laughs> Jesus. Although Bradley Whitford doesn't have a lot of screen time, he chews up every minute of it by once again being very two-faced. One minute he's a goofy father figure that's questionably racist, and the next he's Dr. Herbert West ready to perform the coagula procedure thing. Whatever that's called. Lil Rel Howry is hilarious and Caleb Landry Jones is absolutely sinister throughout, but the most underrated performance in this movie comes from Marcus Henderson as Walter. Marcus Henderson, Betty Gabriel, and Lakeith Stanfield all give amazing performances by basically playing old white people inside of young black people. I... Wow, that sounded gross. It's oddly terrifying to watch Chris try and talk to these characters, and they clearly can't relate to anything he's saying. It's a genius idea from Jordan Peele that makes this movie one of the most innovative and original horror movies of all time. The scares are abundant in this one, between Walter just straight up running right at Chris at one point in a very iconic shot, the sunken place scene, that scene where Chris just goes upstairs and everyone immediately stops talking on a dime. It is fucking scary, man. Oh, that one makes my skin crawl, man. One of the most disgusting disgusting scenes in this movie is when you see Bradley Whitford's character silently auctioning off Chris to all of the party members. It feels very, uh early America and really uncomfortable. The writing is one of the best parts of this movie, though. Once again, an airtight script from Jordan Peele that gets better and better with every single rewatch. There are little nuances and certain lines early on that hit different on rewatch after knowing the twist. For instance, when Chris is on the phone with Rod, Rose chimes in and jokingly says, this is all just a ploy to get with you and I have a feeling she wasn't joking. Another thing I picked up on this time around is that Rose makes a lot of weird jokes about dating the other black people in this movie besides Chris. It's a masterful example of foreshadowing that I really appreciate and makes this movie perfect for a rewatch. The cultural impact of this movie is easily the most important thing about it though, highlighting a certain and very specific type of racism that we unfortunately see far too often in the real world. The Armitages don't necessarily say anything racist, but they say things that make you think they have the ability to do so. I feel like this concept is perfectly summed up by the repetition of of the I would have voted for Obama for a third term joke. They're clearly insecure about their racism and they try to make up for it by saying overly positive things about black people to Chris. Jeremy, for instance, puts Chris in a really awkward position when he brings up his genetic makeup. Yeah, you know the scene I'm talking about. Ugh, fuck. This is something that unfortunately gets brought up a lot, especially directed towards athletes. It's an argument that has no scientific proof behind it and is probably something you've heard from your senile grandpa far too many times. The point being here is that Jordan Peele just really perfectly highlights exactly the specific kind of racism that comes from people who are kind of insecure about it. He made a whole horror movie based off of that, and it's just really fucked up that there's more than one type of racism. It, it, it really sucks, but I've always appreciated Jordan Peele for just hitting this one right on the head. It clearly spoke to a lot of people, and that's why he very obviously deserved an Oscar for this script. It perfectly highlights how uncomfortable it is to be put on a pedestal just because of the color of your skin. Now, once again, to repeat this for a third time, I absolutely love all of Jordan Peele's movies. You can literally rearrange these in any order, I feel like that's totally valid. They're all good movies. They're fantastic. Get Out's just my favorite, though. But what do you guys think about all these movies? Leave me something about it in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this new video, ranking all three of Jordan Peele's movies. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror content. Also, once again, I will be live at 7.30 p.m. Eastern tonight. Don't miss that live stream so we can talk about Nope Live. One more thing I want to throw in here is this is probably going to be my last video of the entire month. I know it really sucks, but I'm going to be really busy filming the rest of Red Right Hand. I just want to get it done this month and start editing the movie. So I'm going to be taking the entire rest of the month to just finish up filming and just get this thing done. I most likely won't post for another two weeks and I'll be back on August 5th to talk about a plethora of movies coming out that day. But rest assured, by the time I come back in August, it's going to be insane. Like there is going to be content every single day on this page and my second channel. Trust me, it's going to be nuts. Thank you all again for watching. And as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.